Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us in this beautiful evening. It was actually really pretty today, Watchful. It was almost swimming weather. Uh, it was just <laughs> insane compared to what it was two days ago. How was the weather out yeah, there? It wasn't, well, it wasn't swimming weather, but it was sunny. And uh, today is our busiest day because we're usually out and about on Thursdays with uh, homeschooling stuff. Uh, well, today we we took a took a break and stopped by the park and played. But it was while it was very sunny, it was freezing. <laughs> it was like huh. know, forty some odd degrees out, but it was nice and sunny. Huh? That's it's. I, just, <laughs> I mean, one day uh, a few days ago, it was dreary and cold and raining. Like it just yeah awful. And um, today, uh, my kids are like, "Hey, can we swim?" I'm like, <laughs> "No." Yeah, we almost went swimming today. We just didn't have the time to fit it in. Thursday, they do an open swim. They they have these. Um, they're not YMCA's. They're like recreation centers, where they yeah. have like these big slides that like twist and stuff like that, and like wave pools. Uh, and then they they do an open day for the uh, kids that are homeschooled. We uh, thought about doing that, but time was just too short. But those are a lot of fun. Yeah, it's um. I need literally uh, an assistant at home. I've thought about yeah. hiring a nanny. It's. I can uh, imagine how helpful it would be with your four kids. Yeah, it's 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 um it's tough, you know. Um, my wife is she's trying to get her her uh, horse farm gig to flourish, so she literally leaves when the sun mm. is coming up, and I'll see her. Uh, 11 or 11 p.m. at night so yeah and i understand she you know she devoted like 15 years as a homemaker and that's an incredibly yeah. hard job for anyone that has done that to have a whole bunch of kids and to take care of the house and everything else it's 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 the hardest job in the world and I didn't realize how hard it was until I'm actually having to do it. So yeah. uh, I tip my hat to folks that um, that are homemakers. It's it's tough. But thankfully, most of yours are grown up. You just have one that's kind of young. That's all. So uh, by and large, they, they they can take care of themselves. It's not like you're uh, juggling infants or toddlers so much. Yeah, and that was kind of my reference point to my wife is that when she was in the trenches, you know, the kids were seven five three one mm. they they were yeah. all needy now yeah uh, only one of them is needy and the others can somewhat take care of themselves but they they still need yeah. help but nevertheless you know that many little souls in the house they need love and attention and that that takes mm. time and um it takes time especially you want to give them one-on-one -on -one attention as well because you know kids need love and it's it's yeah. really important that they feel saturated in love um, yeah. I, I i was blessed to have wonderful parents growing up and i've seen the results of folks that have grown up in a loveless environment and they they turn out cold it's yeah. um and I just, you know, when you've seen the results of that, you, you don't want it for your kids. It's um, it's just how it is with me. Yeah. Anyways, how was your day? Good. Yeah, busy day. Didn't get to spend a whole lot of time on uh, the social network. We It's coming along. We're in the final yeah. testing phase. Should be able to have people start joining on that and uh, be able to start filling up the forums and groups and all the normal social networking stuff that you do. Uh yeah, we'll probably on the app. Yeah, we'll probably release that to the folks in our administration chat for the first few days. I know there's a few that uh, I was chatting with before the show started. The regulars that I see here every night that wanna wanna help as well. Uh, we're growing faster than we can manage. So, if, for folks that have been a regular here if you feel like you have uh something that you can bring to the table to help our mission with christ um watchful needs someone that is proficient with websites and stuff like that he's doing it all himself and he's literally done a year's worth of work in 30 days 
um, you yep. know, app development and website development. It's it's an intense amount of labor, and yeah. he's been working around the clock to get this off the ground. But once we once it's off the ground, he would like to devote his time to scripture and learning and research instead of website maintenance and stuff of that nature. Yeah. So yeah, it would be really helpful if somebody could come help with the website. You don't have to be a co you don't have to be a programmer, but somebody who's proficient with WordPress would be incredibly helpful. Uh, I can yeah. maintain the back end stuff. If you're if you know if you're a full stack developer, that would be awesome, but it's not a requirement. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, we, we would appreciate it. We have we have a, a wonderful group in our staff right now. Uh, we're up to 14 folks. Um, Kip, you know, there's there's a whole bunch of them that we really appreciate the, their help. And Joel has kind of stepped up to the plate to help even more. He's taking over providing us the, the daily news that we go through um, at the start of each show. And it's there's a lot to it. We have Paul that's uh, tending to our Telegram channel. It's, I don't have the list in front of me, so I can sit here and just let my uh, wheels spin trying to remember everybody's involvement, but we really appreciate it. Uh, Stephanie manages our Rumble. Um, We have several that help moderate. Chris K is cutting episodes down from our live show into shorter episodes. So it's, it's a lot to it. So that being said... We'll get into the news real quick so that we can make way for Kip, who's going to get on uh, the stream with us in about 20 minutes, because I really I always look forward to what she's got to say. So I'm sure you guys have seen some of this stuff, especially the folks that are a part of our Facebook community, because I'm pretty active there posting throughout the day. But first order business is um, in New York City is deploying... Uh, you know, their National Guard there. And it's, this is the first step to martial law. Uh, I think we mentioned yeah. this yesterday. but Yeah, we, we mentioned it. Yeah, we mentioned it yesterday. 750 guards, 200 poli- uh, like um, law enforcement. Yeah. And the reason I bring it up is that it, it's almost like that's their plan, is that they can usher in the Antichrist only once things are completely destabilized. And that's the only thing that really makes sense in my head when you think about it, because everything else is is such a. I still I still think it's giving them too much credit to call it a plan. I just think they're idiots. <laughs> it's just like, you know, they thought that by allowing all the immigrants uh, to come in, that uh, you know they were going to be able to get more you know delegates uh, when they do the census uh, without even worrying about the consequences. And now they're dealing with the consequences. I think it was just like, uh, here's the thing though, is that people have been telling, they've been telling them the consequences of their actions since day one. So let's just say hypothetically, you're right. They, people have been screaming it from the rooftops, especially Congress or in their opposing uh, party members. It's, it's, uh, but anyways, it's not worth beating, well, beating that horse. Into well, the ground. it's like it's like these people that we talk to. It's like you can literally show them concrete evidence and they will still utterly ignore and deny, you know, the, the truth that's literally in front of their eyes. It's like there is a literal blindness oh, over people that, right. that can only be I can only describe it as being a spiritual blindness. It uh, you absolutely know, that's just like is. they are just like they're incapable of seeing the consequences of their actions, they're incapable of seeing the truth that's in front of them. And it's mind boggling. Uh, We deal with this with people on a daily basis. And it is just, it is surprising to say the least. It is. It's, um, (laughs) it really is. And there's a, a gentleman that I've been trying to help for about a year. I've mentioned him before. Um, his name is Steven. I don't care if I bus roll him at this point, but you, you know who I'm talking about. Watchful. Anyways, yep. I, I got, I got to the point today uh, or is it, it was yesterday that it was time for me to just call it a wrap, but uh, I brought Dr. Sean in just as a latch ditch effort and whoa, the Steven hmm. turned into a condescending, um, borderline vicious attack person on how, how do you get that way with Sean? <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> it, it, Sean approached him with love and compassion and 
And he literally just, <laughs> I can't even put it into words. But it was yeah. long-winded. It got to the point where he, he, um, f- in the text messages, was threatening Sean, telling him to name the time and place so that he, they can sort it out in a physical manner. And I was like, mm. whoa. Wow. <clears throat> um, interesting enough, though, Sean kept his cool and agreed to even meet with him to show him the error of his way and Hmm. when it was all said and done with steven was apologizing after sean talked with him for 30 more minutes but he he showed his he showed his butt but that was the uh that was the straw on the camel's back for me you know the lord tells us not to waste our time with fools and i spent watch i spent a year working on this guy yeah. Well, and it's not that it's not that we're wasting time. It's just like don't waste long periods of time. You know, you can you can plant a seed and come back and water. It doesn't mean you have to sit there pouring water on top of it. Sometimes God needs to work them over. Or they need to suffer some tribulation to be uh, to be you know opened up to listening. Uh, you know, I've seen that so many times in my life. Just people who just like they needed tribulation. They needed to go through hard times Dude, in order had, to realize. Yeah, I know. He's had hard tribulations. Times. He's. I'm not even going to go into the horrible things that have happened to him. But anyways, yeah. the the reason I brought this up that is you reminded me of the spiritual blindness. I have mm-hmm. literally presented every textbook undeniable proof of and he just point blank does not believe in God. And yeah. when Sean, Dr. Sean started talking to him, usually when Sean um gets in someone's ear his kindness and loving spirit is enough to remove the barriers and at least consider some things but it's almost like there was a demonic spirit inside of this guy because it had the opposite effect he got enraged by sean oh yeah um and i've seen this before not with him but Folks who maybe have been possessed by demonic spirits get around someone that is so holy, like a priest, that they get vicious and want to be physical. Um, hmm. It was really interesting. But anyways. Hey, this uh, chat overlay seems stuck. It's not It's not really going through uh, the, uh, the comments. Silly. It's been on that same, that same comment for <laughs> most of the show. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Great. What do we have in the news? I know um, a bunch of people dropped out of the uh, the uh, primaries. Nikki Haley dropped out. Um, the guy I can't pronounce his name dropped out. Um, I think pretty much Trump is the Republican nominee now. And isn't Biden given uh, some kind of a state of the nation or something tonight? Yeah. So, sorry, I, you derailed me with the chat, uh, the stuck chat. I don't know why so- I keep... The, the, I have it's it's like blazing on the side screen, but I can't figure out how to get it on the screen. But nevertheless, it doesn't really matter yeah. that much. Um, so yeah, I'll get to that in one second. There's uh, actually yeah. I think he's live right now. I, I um, if I thought he was um, would speak clearly enough to make a coherent message, I was going to click over to it so we could watch and and listen to see if he had anything constructive to say. Um, mm. but I don't think it'd be a good use of time. Um, I'm sure someone will, uh, on YouTube will give the skinny and, you know, a, a 30 second skit as far as the revision. But yeah. next piece of news is uh, Spanish soldiers. They are changing their gender from male to female to earn benefits in their nation, only available to females, including higher pay, <laughs> Um, self-identification benefits, um, and there's benefits in these nations that provide incentives for transgender people. Wow. And this is a result of a, something I mentioned last night about one of our administration counterparts lobbying other nations in 
to promote this. And this is one of those uh, nations. It was uh, Argentina and I believe Chile that are providing incentives for transgender uh, stuff in, in their nation's military. This is part of that, uh, what was it, the controlled depopulation? Oh, absolutely. Uh, that the WEF is wanting to do. It's just like, you, you realize that the more they push people towards this, this, you know, transitioning to, you know, the opposite sex and encouraging, you know, um, same sex relationships that that plays into their goals to depopulate the world because you're not making children. Sure. You can adopt children, uh, but they're not making children. And the more they push that, the more it becomes, you know, normal in, in the culture, um, the faster that pop the population um, dwindles because they're not making the new generation. Well, here's, I know a here. lot of people, we've talked about this a lot of times that a lot of people yeah. are afraid the, the planet can't handle the number of people, which is just an outright lie. Yeah. The, the issue that they're going to run into is the same problem that China has been facing now for the last two years. China had a strict yeah. one child policy for almost a decade. And the end result is they have a older generation now that outweighs the youth generation at like a 50 to one ratio meaning yeah. there's not enough sustainable, um, there's not enough balance. You, you have um, a generation that needs the help of the younger generation, which has never been an issue. It's never even been a talking point because there's always been a balance. Yeah. So, you know, that's another rabbit hole we'll talk about another time. But it's interesting. Well, you know, that the thing that... The thing that boggles my mind is the, the world has never been to this level of population that we're aware of. And it's never been 9 billion people. As far as we know, this is the largest amount of people that have been on the planet. And even throughout all the all the millennia, the, the, the adversary has been trying to depopulate, you know, with all of these wars, wiping out massive numbers of people. I mean, just look at the Nazis, how many people they wiped out. And it's just like it's this continual thing of just absolute hatred that the devil just wants to depopulate constantly. Yeah. Uh, one of uh, the comments, Mary says, I've never heard of anything like this. Um, we've talked about this pretty extensively when it comes to the globalist agenda to depopulate. They've, they're have they very clear about this. So this is not speculation or conspiracy theory. They've gone on the record more times yeah. than I have count. It was the talking point of their Davos meeting other than information control uh, a month ago. They have made it clear that the population needs to be reduced by as high as 85 to 90 uh, yeah. percent. They've been clear about it. They've gone on the record saying that they hope that they can depopulate in a civilized manner. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. and it's not like like you said that it's they're not being secret about it. You can I'm pretty sure you can go to their website and it's on the front page. It is. Yeah. And so speaking of depopulation, so Tucker just released a new video that was a whammer. Uh, like in mm. folks that follow us on Facebook, I had posted this earlier, but 17 million 17 million from the medicine that was forced on the globe in 2020, those yep. folks are no longer with us. And that doesn't include the staggering turbo cancers that we're seeing now. This is just from the reported um, ones that are no longer with us from that. This is not the actual illness um, passings. This is just from that medicine, 17 yeah. million. And here's one of the things that's real interesting is that, and he had this uh, doctor on the show that, that did studies when it came to uh, the trials of different medicines. And every, you know, a lot of medicines go through trials and whatnot. They're called safety trials. So a Normal medicines like this, and I keep using medicine just because the other word is a, is a flag word, but normal medicines, when they go through trials, they average um, around zero, maybe one safety signals that get flagged. If it flags two safety signals, it's extremely abnormal and it's extreme high risk. And it's it, at that point, it's not available to the public. 
This medicine had 770 flag safety signals. 770. That's 700% higher than all of the other ones in recorded history. Yeah, if you want to hear something knew interesting, this. and they if knew you want to hear some, if you want to hear something interesting, go watch the the YouTube channels on the morticians that are speaking about how their industry has changed since this was released. Once since this was pushed on the world, their 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 daily workload has gone up over ten times, and the oh, things that business. they're seeing inside people they've never seen before. It's very 100%. interesting. Uh, I forget the name of that doctor that's in England. He's an older gentleman. Everybody's going to know who I'm talking about. I can't remember his name, but he's very popular. He's on Rumble. He's on YouTube. He deals in interviews. Uh, He's a very well-known, respected doctor that interviews coroners and morticians. And and I've actually shared a few of his videos on our social media pages. And the stuff that they're seeing is mind-boggling. And what's yeah. interesting is, you know, in the 40s, the Nazis had attempted to essentially exterminate an entire race. And there was an enormous loss of life then. And that was six million souls that were lost. We're talking triple that number in a less amount of time. This is full-blown genocide on an industrial scale. And we don't even have the real numbers yet. This is a conservative estimate. It's, yeah. um, you know, watchful. It's, it's one of those things that when it's all said and done with, the numbers could be so staggeringly high after the turbo cancers are calculated in and then the actual illness itself, how many were involved with passings from that and then the direct effects from the medicine that was jabbed, it could be a quarter of the Earth's population. Oh, yeah. I've thought that from the very beginning that that could very well be the cause. And even there's even scripture reference um, that in the during the Great Tribulation, when they're talking about like the boils on the skin, um, some people have had autoimmune issues as a result of this, that they're experiencing those boils. I fully expect it to get worse. Like as as you know, this progresses. Time. Yeah that it's just going to continue to progress. I think that you can be protected if, if people were forced to take it, or if you were in that situation where you had to take it, I think God can protect you. Um, because I don't think this is the mark of the beast. I think this is, I think this was the sword that was given to the the rider on the red horse, um, to take uh, peace from the earth. Uh, so, uh, but I do believe that you can be protected and healed. So if you, if you took it, um, if I were you, I'd be praying, (laughs) praying, fasting, you know, really, Well, Joel had done some research on ways to detox it from your body. Um, He may Mm. be in the chat or he may not be, but he had uh, a cocktail of uh, stuff that he had researched that came from different doctors that was a way to detox it. Sadly, both of my parents who have been like oxes their entire lives, both of them within six months of receiving it, both developed cardiac issues and are now on medication oh. from their physicians. My guy that used to tend to my yard, a day after he took it, was no more. And it, it was weird because, you know, he would come like clockwork and he was such a nice guy. Every Monday he'd cut the yard, trim the yard. And one Monday he didn't show up. And I was like, oh, that's, that's weird. So I texted and called, never got him. Next Monday comes along, didn't show up. I kept texting and calling. Eventually, his daughter gets his phone and returns my call and explains within 24 hours of him receiving that, he dropped to the floor and did not recover. The very next week, my next door neighbor that's exactly to the right of me, uh, my kids play with their kids. He dropped to the ground standing on his front porch and Mm -hmm. didn't get up. Yeah, we know we know probably fifteen people in you know throughout our family line, or not 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 directly in our family. Most of my family didn't didn't take any of it, uh, but friends and um, you know associates and coworkers and stuff like that. Well over fifteen people um, j- that you know are no longer as a result of it. And you know, there's even mo- there's several who are uh, experiencing consequences that uh, they never had beforehand. 
it's it's truly sad. My general practitioner, who had been my doc for over a decade, died from it. Um, my parents, who you know, they're in that uh, generation of that was uh, around during the time of Israel's formation. You know, their generation, you know, is in their seventies to eighties, and they are very social people. So they have an, an enormous network. Um, they were going to a funeral almost twice a week um, for for literally for the last <laughs> twenty four yeah. months, like twice yep. a week. And it even gets worse, you know. Where I'm involved with the employment that I do during the day is there's a lot of correlation with local law enforcement. Um, the gentlemen that um, that serve our great town and protect us, they were. Uh, mandated and pressured into receiving it. Hmm. There's been four of them that have passed from the turbo cancer. One of them was a close, close friend to my boss. He was, he just felt sick one day, went to the doctor and within four weeks he was on hospice. And then a few days later, gone. Hmm. That does remind me, we do actually have some family members who are, they, they tend to the, uh, the other side of the spectrum. If you want to put them into, you know, any kind of a spectrum, they, uh, they take every single one that comes out boosters and all they're like eagerly getting them and, and trying to, you know, get their children, um, to get them as well. And it's Guys. honestly, they, they're sick all the time. My, sisters are in that camp my parents and i have warned them and mourned them sadly they spent the last decade living on the west coast in the sunshine state Hmm. and they have their minds have been exposed to an overwhelming amount of doctrinated information and they truly believe everything that comes across mainstream media. Yeah. And yep. my one sister has almost died twice in the hospital. And this is a vibrant young girl. She's in her mid-30s, the prime of her life, and has been hospitalized multiple times. One of them, they had to pull a mass out of her abdomen that was the size of a grapefruit. Wow. And... She says there's no correlation. Ah. None, none at all. But wow. what do you say? I mean, how do you even yeah. approach them? They, when I, I used to talk about it with them, and they said, look, I'm going to block you and stop coming to family gatherings if you, you know, continue to tell me these lies. So mm. I, I can't even talk to them about it. You know, I yeah. just I enjoy my time with them now. But they have zero interest in the truth. Yeah, so I, I think so we all have that, a couple of those in our families, too. I've got some of those, too. Some people that actually did outright block me. I think I only ended up blocking one person because he was so vicious. Um, and it's, it's sad because he was actually a um, a childhood mentor of mine who, you know, I looked up to as a, as a kid. And he became a pastor. But he had became he. The only way I can explain it is he had become so overwhelmingly possessed that it was unsafe to have contact with him, uh, yeah. just because the things he was saying. Yeah. Janie, Janie asked in the chat, "Do you believe Christy believe this is the mark of the beast?" No, I don't. Uh, yeah. y- you will not be able to be tricked into the mark of the beast. You will willingly accept this. There will be no misunderstanding of what you will take. So I, I've heard many, many people over the last few years worry themselves to death, thinking one way or the other they have taken it. Guys, it is going to be very clear what you're taking. However they deliver it, whatever the method is, there will be no gray area on this. So yeah, just, And those who are written in the book of life will know. Yeah. So, yeah, and you'll also know because you won't be able to buy or sell. So when, when, when something comes along that's purported on the entire world, which this was a precursor to that, this is a good foreshadow 
of how they might do that you know, a trial run if you will because this the you know what we're what we've been talking about was was pushed on the entire world it was used and, as a weapon and at some point you couldn't participate in certain things unless you had it I got this close to taking it. And if it wasn't for my wife, I would have. Because my event business, we were doing Mm. weddings, 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 weddings. And they were mandating it from the event vendors. And they were like, you can't come if you're not, if you don't do it. And my wife put her foot down and said, uh, no. And uh, I I told the the different... um, venues and whatnot i was like well just tell the couple i'm not gonna be there because i'm not getting it uh, yeah. and Good. and luckily for me i didn't lose any work but i was very close to taking it and i'm glad oh. that i didn't yep yep so you're kind of blurry there brother oh my focus so uh i think our um our leader of the current free world is speaking to the nation. Anybody have any Uh, updates on anything that he said? Someone in the chat said that it looks like they gave him a whole bunch of Adderall. (laughs) 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 He must. Yep. It's getting to that point. You know, it's, um, they may have, you never know. It's, yeah. So well, obviously they have they, they have to juice him up anytime he goes up on stage. And even still the gaffes that he comes up with are just mind boggling. I'm really looking forward to seeing the live debates with the opponent uh, uh, opposing candidate. Do you think they're going to do those again or do you think he's going to be another closet? Basement? Which choice does he doesn't have a choice? Not that he physically doesn't have a choice. Oh, here comes Kip. Let's bring her in. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't think they're they're going to come up with an excuse or they're going to change something because I cannot see him. I don't know. He may he may not be the Democratic pick, but it looks like he's going to be. Which is ridiculous. Kipperoo. Hello. Hello. Oh, so good to see you. I don't know if you saw some of the stuff that's in the chat, but um, and now I don't remember who it was. Um, there was, I think it was Jeremiah said that he had a friend who worked in the railroad and the government has been, um, since 2015, um, welding rings into the rail cars, you know, like, so they can chain people up and, and then, uh, also there was a report of a 88,000 guillotines being, being shipped to uh, military bases in Montana. And I can't remember where the other place was, but um, look in the chat. So I don't know if you guys wow. remember, well, actually watchful, you're too young. Um, Chris might've just kind of gone on the edge of this back in the we're 70s. The, we're the same age, Kip. Chris and I are you the same are? age. Mm-hmm. I don't I'm, know. I'm I have 50. no idea. You've got great skin, buddy. You're 50? You guys are 50? Oh, okay. So you guys might remember. I'm 58. Um, There was a movie back in the 70s and 80s that they used to show, and it was one of those um, kind of scary into heaven movies. And at the end, you know, these people had gotten left behind. The rapture happened, and they were left behind. And these teenagers, uh, they had to make a choice, and and they had to walk up to the guillotine. Hmm. You know, and they were were in their white robe, and they were – singing you know some songs and they were hugging each other and they and they went to the guillotine that was kind of the then the pastor came out and gave the the salvation message but well here's um, the thing. i remember that movie and i remember thinking that's not a horrible way to go uh, <laughs> honestly yeah. and it sounds yeah. worse than it must be oh uh, it'll be quick and simple um yeah i i know it's horrible as that sounds but you wouldn't be, you'd be blown away with how much information I'm provided to each day through, I'm bombarded with emails and messages, but I'm very mm-hmm. careful what I present to the community. I get tons of stuff. Unless I can verify things, uh, I won't uh, bring it to the community because there's so much. It, yeah. I, I, it's so much. Uh, it's, yeah, this isn't the first time I've heard the guillotine thing. I know that there's laws on the on the records, 
um, for the use of guillotines. I haven't verified that myself. That would be something to, that we should look at. And I'd also like to get verification on the shipments of these things because that's very interesting. If we could find proof on that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, the rail cars also, that's really interesting. But I've uh, I've been sent messages like that and saw, uh, again, the amount of uh, messages and friends sending me stuff daily is enormous. But... Uh, I really have to confirm it in multiple places and discernment's got to tell me that this is fact before I even present it to the community. Otherwise, the whole point of the information we provide is null and void. You know, mm-hmm. the folks are devoted to come here to make sure that they're getting facts and not speculation or conspiracy theory. So I... Yeah. I I, Is there we, such a thing as conspiracy theory anymore? <laughs> right. Well, it, it, it's, conspiracy well, theories tend to be more true. Yeah. I get it, but they're still theories. So true. it needs to be conspiracy fact. And I, I take the information delivery very serious. Otherwise, there's no point. You know, it's you could just go ham on all the craziness that's brought into the public domain for absorption. Um, so. Oh, yeah. It's a lot. It is definitely a lot, that's for sure. Yeah, it is. Um, I can save the rest of the news for another yeah, night. Well, what, what, what else was on the news? Um, California bill moving to provide zero interest mortgage loans to those who have come here not the correct way. California oh. state legislation is approving a bill that will allow these new arrivals to get the same home buyer uh, incentives that the citizens of that state get. Essentially, it's a um, it's called the California Dream for All Fund. It gives them interest-free loans to buy their own house with no money down. Wow. <laughs> wow, I'd like to get one of those. Right. Um, we all. Most of my mortgage goes to interest. (laughs) I know. Um, Scholars have now agreed that pedophilia, or however you say that, is now a sexual orientation that should be accepted nationally through society. They have done nothing wrong, and they should not be condemned for it. Nope, that's a lie. They have done nothing wrong. Scholars Um, are pushing this everywhere. And they are passing laws in these blue states that will make it a crime to, uh, it'll be a hate crime calling these folks something of that nature. They're going to be called some other name, but. Minor attracted persons. Yeah. In the days of Noah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh, So. More and more of it. Yeah. And and they're doing TED Talks on this too. Literally yeah. TED Talks, uh, trying to convince people that this is normal. Sorry, it is well, not normal. I, I remember when it went from uh, when the when gender orientation became the word. It was never mm-hmm. orientation before, but once that slippery slope of wording happened, um, rather than choice or something like that, it was orientation like you were born with it. You were born this yeah. way. Um, the minute they did that, um, all was lost. Yep. All was lost. I remember that, but that was like in the Mm nineties at some point in time. I can't remember, but I remember, I remember the, the, the ballot measures and I remember the conversation and I remember everybody, you know, in my circle saying, this is going (laughs) to, the end is near. This marks the start of the, uh, the, the times of Noah and Lot. We fought like hell against gender orientation. Or yep. sexual orientation. We fought against that in Washington State, of course, Washington State. I'm, I don't live there anymore. Um, but yeah, it it passed, and, and that was kind of the beginning of the end. Hmm. Yeah. It's, yep. So uh, our current leader um, is speaking, and one thing that's real interesting is they have erected a massive, massive wall around the Capitol compound enormous it is a and it's gonna stay there um for uh, the next week or two it's 
Capitol Police have commented that this is extremely abnormal, but a robust security plan is in, in place. What are they expecting? It's um, They have National Guards on presence, uh, additional police, and the Democrats are pushing for this to be called normal. Now, I am officially putting this out there. They are no longer Democrats to me. They are fascist Nazis. I'm not going to mm-hmm. call them Democrats anymore because there's nothing Democratic about what they do. Mm-hmm. I'm expecting well, a, a, a Palpatine moment those from, those Star, from Star Wars. Wars. I didn't understand that. You guys were talking at the same time. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm expecting a, a Senator Palpatine moment from Star Wars where he asks for emergency powers right before he issues Order 66. <laughs> Yeah. That's probably true. I, I did see videos of, of some really large um, incident vans. I mean, the like semi-trailer sized incident vans and, and trailers uh, circling around. So I, I don't know what they're waiting for. I'm, you know, honestly, is a UFO going to land on, on the White House lawn and, and we're about to you know, witness our space brothers showing up. Is that what's going on? The war of the worlds. That'd be fun. Some, something's coming. They've been planting the seed for quite some time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but who really knows? But uh, we will find out soon. I think whatever their right now plan he's is. Ta- he's talking about jobs and how good he's done. <laughs> is he high? <laughs> well, he's I, I, deceived I and and didn't jesus say in the end times be sure that you're not deceived i i, I think joe biden is totally deceived <laughs> yeah and it's not even funny anymore because he's mm-hmm. selling this grand delusion to a large percentage of the population that actually buy into the deceptive narrative it does not take a rocket scientist. It doesn't matter what side of the aisle you are on. If you have to just live and pay your way, it doesn't matter if you have children, if you live on your own and have car insurance and have a home or a rent, or you fill your food with, you know, your fridge with food, or you have children or have to clothe them or your grocery bill, the difference from what it was like in 2020 to now is staggering. They say that the inflation is only 6 7%. I say it's 50%. I, I don't know what they're talking about. I've seen the cost of living skyrocket. I've seen eggs that used to cost $3 now cost $9. Milk used to be like 2 or 3 bucks. Now it's like 6 bucks. I, yep. I don't know what they're talking about as far as 7 or 8% inflation. Everything costs you, enormously you need to more. Move to Texas. I mean, maybe I'm. Wrong. I I I still have pretty decent prices here, honestly. Um, hmm. Yeah. So maybe Texas is. I don't know the promised land. Yeah, we can talk not... about that next year, next week when we kind of talk about the eclipse again and some other things that are coming up because because that X over Texas to me is is a, a kind of a promised land symbol. I... Possibly a, a a rapture symbol as well. Yeah, it, but I know that no, I'm not paying that yeah. much for milk. <laughs> Don't take this the Must wrong nice. way, but you 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 couldn't pay me to live in Texas. It, yeah, that's, that's and not because of anything wrong with Texas. I love those people, but that is a war zone. They are they're using DEWs on that state. It's not even oh, deba- yeah. it's not even debatable. The panhandle, no, we absolutely know it, and and they did it um, four or five years ago. There was a huge wildfire that started up in the panhandle, went all the way up into through Oklahoma and into uh, uh, Kansas. If y'all remember, hmm. um, our cattle herds were were uh, burned. It was so fast moving, um, and the winds were very unnatural winds. Um, that they, they literally burned herds alive. They could not get their yeah. cattle out of the way. Here's the telltale sign of, of the DEW. And, and this is something that they can't refute, and you'll never hear them talking about it. Rims on cars are melting. Street signs are bending over and melting. This is a temperature that has to burn at over 1,400 degrees. The 
natural wildfires do not burn that hot. They yeah, are literally melting metal. And yep. this only happens with direct energy. So yep. I don't care what you anybody says that refutes this. You look at any fire in history, national wildfire, rims are not melting on cars. No. Street signs are not bending over and turning to goo. Yeah. Well, the it's, other thing well, they're to, doing is to, they are kept trailing the abs, absolute liver out of us here. And we know that it's heavy metals and other iron oxides and stuff in these chemtrails. Well, those are accelerants. So mm. the more they drop on us, the faster those fires ignite, the faster they burn. So they're yeah. doing it all on purpose. It's all part of the plan. Yeah, Jeremiah and to your, said, to your point, ahead. Kip, about the uh, cattle is go buy beef because your beef mm -hmm. prices are going to go up even more this year because they ha they're having to, to euthanize thousands upon thousands of cattle mm -hmm. in Texas right now because of these fires. This yeah, is I, I have a local farmer. I have a friend and I buy directly from the farmer and he does not inflate his prices because of what's happening at the grocery store. So find yourself a real farmer, you guys, and support them. You know, a rancher that's got a couple hundred head. I mean, something, something like that. And especially somebody that, that does it organically, non-GMO, that kind of thing. Go, go find yourself somebody that does chickens and eggs and, and get your stuff from, directly from the farmer if you can. It's it, it, as awesome as that sounds. That's not sustainable with someone like me with a family of six that, that blows through $200 a day in food. Um, if it was me on my own, I would be totally down with that because I'm good not eating anyways. And I could make meat last for a long time. But for growing kids, man, they blow through food. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I'll go to Aldi when I can because Aldi's really got some good prices. But some stuff you, you're forced to go from somewhere else. And Jeremiah said, didn't that happen on the island? Absolutely. It yes. absolutely did happen on the yeah, island. It, everything is a mirror image of it. Delay. Yeah. It, this in, in California. Mm -hmm. they oh, had, yeah, the California it, wildfires. It, it's, it just is what it is. I need to go get more coffee. I'll be right back. You, guys you know, fun. it absolutely astounds me that the public knows these things are happening. We talk about it openly. There are podcasters, big time names, your Joe Rogans, uh, your Tucker Carlson's, people like that talking about these things openly. Redacted has, what, 2 million subscribers watching? Mm -hmm. and, and we talk about this thing, these things in the open. We know it. And they still just continue to do it because no one is stopping them. They're like, well, you guys talk about it, but until you stop us, we're just going to keep doing it. And we're going to keep pretending like it's a wildfire and the, the media will just keep, keep reporting it. It, it astounds me that, that us knowing doesn't stop them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we were going to talk about uh, the coming UFO deception tonight. So oh, that was, that's what we came here to talk about. So More UFOs. There you go. Well, as long as we were talking about the possibility of, hey, you know what's going on? Is there going to be an Emperor yeah. Palpatine moment? Or right. are we going to have like a touchdown on the the uh, White House lawn or something in the Rose Garden? Um, yeah. I'm um, listening. I'm listening to the State of the Union. And I honestly, I somebody needs to overlay this with Senate with Palpatine doing his speech because the way he is to tooting his own horn about what he has done, I am totally I I could totally see the parallel with him in the Senate like because like they're they're getting up and down like clapping for our, all the things that he says that he's done. It is mind boggling well, how put similar it, put, this it, is. put it up on the screen. I'll screen share so you can share that. Um, and then yeah, I don't think my stuff. audio will come through. Um, it may, um, I, I, I knew why it didn't before. So just try it. Okay. Right. Can you hear that? Um, hold on. Let me adjust the sound. Uh -huh. Yeah. Look at, chanting look four at more years. Mike Johnson behind him. <laughs> He's like, uh, are you kidding me? <laughs> He's smirking and laughing. Yeah, it's on e it's on virtual audio. 
Um, we had yeah. a guest that did this the other night, and it played. Yeah, you know what? They, I, I think they didn't have the microphone and uh, headphone setup that I have. I think their microphone was picking up the sound from their speakers. But because mm-hmm. I, don't, I have headphones on, I don't think it's picking up the sound. That's all right. He's not really saying that very much exciting stuff. It's just fun watching him stand up and down, up and down every time he says something like that he did that was so great. Look at all those brainwashed clowns. He's on his game tonight. He doesn't look like he doesn't look like Sleepy Joe tonight. Oh, there we go, standing up again. (laughs) Well, you know, it's probably not even him. They throw his brother out there. They've got body doubles. Have you guys seen the masks that the CIA have? Oh my gosh, I could I could be Joe Biden, and you would never know it. (laughs) <laughs> yes, I mean, I get that. I it's, I just don't have evidence of that stuff as much as that stuff sounds like it could be. Uh, I don't I don't talk about that oh, just because I. But look yeah, how Mike Johnson's right looking. Videos. <laughs> well, it's there's so much. It doesn't even matter. Standing up the, again. Doesn't even matter if it's the right video. I can make stuff look real on AI. But look at how Mike yeah. Johnson is looking at him. He is. He's not standing up either. He's look at him. No. Oh, that's he's funny. Looking like this is insane. Yeah, I'm gonna grab my coffee. I just wanted to switch screens. All right. Yeah. Good old Bernie. Everything he's saying is is how great, you know, that they've done, how they've cut taxes and and you know and given internet to everybody and what? I pay for my internet. Uh Nobody so there was a taxes. something called the ACP. Yeah, there was something called the ACP, uh the affordable connectivity plan or something like that to where yeah, that um you have that now? No, that yeah, yeah. Out. so it's like I don't have it anymore. Yeah, it, yeah, it stopped in February. Uh, but for a couple of years, you were able to get internet for thirty dollars um, or a phone for free. Hmm. I think some people are able to get internet for free. Also, he keeps talking about how he's saving taxpayers hundreds of billions of dollars. I can't believe that this is true. Anyway, saving money on drug costs. Let's let's this move on to to Kip's presentation because is awful as this sound it's still not kind of centered around christ and it's speculation yeah. for one political side or the other so let's move on well to i want to see that i want to see the alien land on the lawn <laughs> because then then we'll be right on topic <laughs> it does right that that wide shot does look a little bit like it's out of uh star wars this, this is infuriating i mean this i can't wait to see somebody overlay this with star wars because i'm waiting for him to ask for emergency powers you be the guy to do it. No, I don't have time. I'm working. No, on I, I get it. But it's, I, you know, we spent a little time on this and this is kind of uh, shifting to a political bias. And that's that's not what we're about. The, you know, we should keep this centered around Christ. Uh, I understand that he's a I'm not even going to go into what I think about him personally, but it's we said what we had to say on him. Let's move on to something else. All right. All right, Kip, let's go back to aliens. So when the disciples asked Jesus about the end of the age, the first thing he said was, do not be deceived. So what do you think the deception will be? Well, I, I absolutely believe that it's it's going to be UFOs, our space brothers. They are going to magically show up, whether they show up on the White House lawn, which, hey, it looks like they might be preparing for that right now. Who knows? Um you know, or whether it's it has something to do with the rapture event that um, uh, we call our glorious hope here in the in the church. Um, hmm. I think that is exactly what is going to be used against the people, and um, yeah. especially in the the new age movement, they have been preparing us for aliens for for decades. So the the new age movement sees uh, aliens as our older brothers, our space brothers, and that they seeded us here 
decades ago or you know eons ago and then they left us to grow on our own and and now that they see that we are um constantly at war and that that we have not grown united but um are are you know uh, fighting one another constantly, they're coming back to set us straight and teach us how to love again. And, uh, you know, honestly, the new age folks have really led the charge on this. So I don't know how many of you guys have seen new age channelers, but it's, it's really funny. M nobody, nobody channels, um, Marie Antoinette or something like that. They all channel, mm -hmm. you know, these, these space beings. And I got to mm. say, years ago, I was a TV producer and uh, we went over to uh, Montana to a place uh, right, right south of Gardner, uh, which it was right on the Yellowstone border. I mean, it was literally the, the, the headquarters of the Church Universal and Triumphant was, was like 15 yards away from the sign that said Yellowstone. Um, and it was a very, very rich, influential cult. And the, the, head of this cult was, uh, uh, oh, what was her name? Something Claire, Elizabeth Claire Prophet of all things. And that was her real name. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a fake name, Elizabeth Claire Prophet. And she was a new age guru and she built people out of millions of dollars. And, wow. uh, me and my photographer and my, my show host back in the day, we went, we got an interview with her. And we, we had so much fun actually watching her expose herself, but right in the middle of our interview, she stopped and went, ming, ming. I'm getting a message. I'm getting, wow. oh, and she started to channel, get this agent number 99 of the intergalactic secret service. Hmm. What? Interesting. I know. <laughs> I was like, okay, you really lost me here. You're a total loon. But, but people actually, they believe that. Um, and if they are channeling anything, um, it's definitely demonic. That's, that would be a, what a medium is for anyone who gets into that kind of stuff. That's a medium. And, and the Bible specifically tells us if you're a medium, you know, between uh, uh, the demonic realm and, or the spirit realm and the living realm, that's, that is a very, very bad thing. So, but here's my question, you know, let's, let's just talk about aliens. If aliens are so advanced and they've, they've traveled, first off, why would they want to travel millions of light years to come here? That makes no sense to me. And yeah. if they did, they have to be extremely advanced. Well, if they're extremely advanced, why do they need my vocal cords to be able to talk? I mean, can't they call me on the phone? Can't they send me an email? I mean, come on, just, just show up and talk to me, but they've got to somehow that, that doesn't sit right with me at all, that they need to possess my body and use my vocal cords to be able to speak to us. So that tells me that, that these space brothers are not extraterrestrial. They're interdimensional. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Cause that's, that's, that's possession. And here's the problem with all of this is the church, the church doesn't understand the church as a whole is not being taught about aliens, that aliens are not extraterrestrial, they're interdimensional. And if they're interdimensional, that means they're from the spirit realm. That means they're fallen angels. That means that they're Nephilim. And we all know, uh, that Jesus said that in the days of Noah, um, I, that, that in the end would be just like the days of Noah, you know, mm -hmm. uh, well, what's he talking about? Well, he's talking about the, the, uh, fallen angels, you know, having sex with women and making this demonic hybrid race. Okay. We all know that the Nephilim are back because the first time Jesus came to the earth, what did he come to do? save us from sin and death right he came to well to, he was sent to the lost sheep of the house of israel right mm -hmm. and he paid the price and he he took down sin and death mm -hmm. that's what he took down those were the strongholds he took down well he's coming this next time to take down the demonic realm that has been dogging mankind since the fall of man that's mm -hmm. that's the enemy he's gonna take down and so do you 
the do church doesn't that, know. Do you think that deception has anything to do with uh, the varied uh, or the myriad of um, religions? Because there's so many beliefs, you know, from evolution to just variations on what the Bible says. So often people believe what they're told without actually checking what's what's written. And then they go on to teach that. Um, and then that goes on to get taught. And then before you know it, you have, you know, this mass consensus on something that's not even true. You know, I see that with a lot of end times eschatology, honestly, mm -hmm. I really do. Yeah. There's, there's so many things that people will repeat because they've heard it and they've heard it and they've heard it. And I'm like, but the Bible doesn't actually say that. And if you read it, I mean, it's like the, the peace treaty between the Antichrist in Israel. There is no peace treaty between the Antichrist and Israel in scripture. Right. It says there is a treaty uh, or a, a, a covenant with many. Many. Okay. A covenant with many is not a peace treaty between the Antichrist and Israel. But yeah, I think they get people, that because it says for when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction. So they they make these assumptions where they connect these two things together. Yeah. And, and they've had pastors and preachers and teachers who have done that for generations. And so it's yep. just ingrained. And so when you tell somebody that's not in the Bible, uh, they lose their, their cookies. Um, and actually what people are really losing their cookies about lately is the rapture of the church. If you want to get in a serious fight in church with church people, talk about the pre-tribulation rapture. I'm telling you what, um, you'll you'll get people who will not speak to you anymore because there is no such thing, and you are deceived, and um, uh, we all just go to the end, and God's going to protect us all the way through. Well, okay, I've, I researched this out and I absolutely will not give up my hope um, in the pre-tribulation rapture. And I also see uh, the pre-tribulation rapture, not only in scripture, you know, especially through, through the word harpazo, which mm -hmm. is, uh, which is a, a Greek word, but the Latin word for harpazo is rapturo. So that's where we get rapture. So everybody's, oh, rapture's not in the Bible. Well. You know, when you translate from this to this, yes, it is. So, and it means catching up. And uh, and then there's also the the Galilean wedding feast. So, mm -hmm. but here's the deal. I think I think the I think the wedding stuff that you presented is probably the best argument for the pre tribulation rapture. Um, that makes the most sense to me in my mind because why would the bride be put through suffering? Yeah. Um, you know, if, uh, why, why would a good groom say, Hey, I love you, baby. I'm going to give you everything I've got, but I'm going to turn you over to the most evil person in the universe. And he's going to probably do his worst to you. He's probably even going to kill you, but Hey, then everything's going to be okay. I, I just don't see that. I think, I think our God is way too good for that. And he's, and he said, you know, uh, in, in, uh, revelation, Three, when he talks about the, mm -hmm. the church of Philadelphia, and he says, I have the keys. Behold, I give you an open door. Pray that you be counted worthy to escape the wrath or the, the day of trial that is coming upon the whole earth. So yep. he's letting us know that there is an escape. And and people are get so mad. Oh, you're just an escapist. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I am. I don't want to go through tribulation. Who in their right mind wants to? Yeah, give I mean, me if it's, if it's going to be fun, if we have supernatural ability, then yeah, maybe, but I don't want to go mm -hmm. through the pain and suffering and loss. We've already gone through so much of that. They'll just, you know, even just in, oh, geez, I don't know for the last 25 years, honestly, but especially in the last four years. Yeah. Yeah. So, so here's the deal. So what does the alien deception have to do with the rapture? Well, yeah, that is that is becoming a really dominant narrative. And there's it's interesting because there's more and more evidence that's coming up with this stuff. Um, I've seen some of the stuff that you're going to present tonight. I mean, I'm excited to go over this. Uh, so how, how do you think evil men and the devil himself could pull off pull off a, kind of a mass deception? Well, first off, I mean, let's just set the scenario. So um, the devil knows scripture and he probably knows it better than we do <laughs> and yeah. he is absolutely the demonic uh the satanists 
uh, the New Agers. It's it's funny how these people are preparing for the rapture as yep. the church is saying it doesn't exist. Hmm. So what's this all about? So the scenario would be the rapture of the church happens and millions of people, maybe even billions of people disappear. And who knows? Um, it might be a very public event. You know, when Jesus ascended, they saw him ascend into the clouds. When uh, uh, Elijah went up in a chariot of fire, they watched him go. Mm -hmm. Right. So who's to say that we are going to just disappear? Who's to say that we won't go? Whoosh! Yeah, now we we may be seen, but they're prepared on the other side of the veil on the other side of the the um the dimensions to show up with great big alien craft right after that is over you know the minute that we disappear here comes the alien crafts oh you know what those people they were the bad people they were they were never gonna gonna conform you people are the good people you who are still here you're the ones that we can work with you're the good people they were bad and we had to take them up for reprogramming you know we'll bring them back later if if they can if they can you know fit in with the rest of you but don't worry about them uh, we had to get rid of them uh, because they were they were causing trouble and you guys we can work with you so with that kind of scenario, think about it. Um, the minute that we are raptured, the minute that the church disappears and aliens show up and say, hey, that was all because of us. We did that. The vast majority of the earth is going to believe that. And what's really scary is the left behind church, the, the five virgins that did not have the oil, according to, to uh, scripture, they are going to believe that too. Over hmm. well, between 40 and 61% of the church believe in aliens. Hmm. Yeah, in aliens, not in, oh, those could be Nephilim or fallen angels or anything like that. They actually believe it's life on other planets. So, you know, how, how could the devil pull this off? How could evil man pull it off? Easy. You know, we've all seen holograms. We've all seen drones in Project Bluebeam. Um, the technology absolutely exists to put giant craft in the air. You know, if the demonic realm doesn't do it themselves, mankind yeah, certainly I've, can. I've seen those videos and, and I've talked to Christopher. He says that he has friends in, I think it's Dubai, who have seen those those holograms and said that they're convincing i'm still kind of on the fence because i haven't seen them myself and the holograms i have seen are obviously fake so i'm i don't i'm hoping that i get to see this technology because i have a hard time believing these things as not being hoaxes on the internet um mm -hmm. you know it'd be interesting to talk to more people from dubai because we only have one reference right now of somebody who said that they've seen yeah. it yeah, and I don't know if you can play the videos that I gave you, but I, I gave you three quick videos. Uh, in Korea, SK tel uh, Telecom used 5G AR, whatever that is. What is AR? Augmented reality. Augmented reality. To bring yeah, usually, a fire. So usually, so usually you have to wear glasses to see that. Mm -hmm. But this did not take glasses. So that hmm. is a dragon, a fire breathing dragon flying around. It's, it's, they call, they said it was five, uh, five dimensional. Interesting. It was a five dimensional dragon flying around. So everybody could see it and the cameras picked it up. Look at that. The cameras are even picking it up. That's crazy. Well, it says they, yeah, it says it's augmented VR, virtual reality. So they didn't wear glasses, huh? No, that was four that. years ago. And did you see that the camera picked it up because it was, um, it was in the jumbotron? So did did people in the audience actually see this? Yeah. Or were they just seeing it on the TV? 
No, they actually they... saw it. Huh. Yeah, this is the, they do so this. That's... There's thousands of satellites in space that uh, participate in Project Bluebeam. I keep hearing that, but I haven't seen it myself. And when I look at this, it just looks to me like, you know, it's on the TV or it's in the camera. Yeah. yeah. Well, this this was four years ago. So imagine how much better they've gotten at it. Now, here's a 5G. There's also a, yeah, there you go. I mean, if you want to fill a ballpark, <laughs> here's a way yeah. to do it. <laughs> they no, I have 20. seen these. I have seen these, that the next one on the shorts. I've seen these in San Francisco. Um, mm -hmm. And those are usually the result of, it's obvious that those are a TV screen. Like when so, you take a picture of them, a video of them, yeah, they do look like this, but it's obvious that it's a TV screen when you're looking at it. Yeah, uh, the 2022 Commonwealth Games with Prince Charles and the mullet bull that they rolled out, the, the start of that ceremony, the houses from all around the kingdom floated in and landed on the grounds um, as a part of the ceremony. And... It looked extremely real, and that was done with the satellites from Project Bluebeam. Mm -hmm. Huh. Yeah. So what I fi find funny about this video right here is, you know, uh, here's this space monster kind of checking everything out, and the people are just, there There aren't a lot of people there, but the few that are are totally ignoring it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're totally ignoring yeah. it. I've, I've, seen these in, I've seen these in San Francisco. It's just like part of their scenery. It's, yeah, uh, it looks like, really cool. Yeah, it's absolutely really cool. And a lot of the buildings have, you know, these big, just big screens that do this kind of thing. But when you're, when you're there, it's obvious that it's a TV screen. Well, and what's so funny about the people saying, and I, maybe not so funny as concerning about the people just like, uh, walking by is they don't think anything of it anymore. They're, they're not mm -hmm. in wonder. They're not in awe. They're like, eh, whatever. Is that, yeah. That that scares me that people think, eh, whatever. Oh, it's just, you know, uh, that that means they're actually um, ready for the lie. Right. So mm -hmm. and then there's and then there's the whales that are jumping out of the water. Now, that one is nope. was from Dubai. Yeah, this is the one that Christopher says he has a friend in Dubai who who um, didn't, didn't you say they vouched for this, that it looks real? Yeah, yeah I mean, I've heard this from several trusted sources i wouldn't bring it up if i wasn't confident on it hmm. yeah so these whales come up out of the water and then they fly now these people are like oh that's cool they're at least watching in china they walk right past it like well whatever <laughs> hmm. and they're taking pictures of it you know i i find that fascinating you can take a picture of something like that that it would show up on film I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe I'm crazy. But yeah, that's that's the amazing thing is we have the technology to totally think fool people into thinking that a whale can fly. So the governments of the world, you know, as well as met NASA, they absolutely admit to UFOs. We've got lots of military pilots that have been coming forward and they've been releasing photos and videos and speaking out about their encounters with ufos alien crafts that kind of thing well why now why now that's been taboo for for years and years and years and all of a sudden the government can let out this information well there's a whistleblower named david grush and he's an ex-pentagon officer and he told a, a select congressional committee that the military has more than just some crashed ufos and if you want to play that that would be great I don't know if we can hear it. Yeah, I've seen that uh, interview with Grosh. Non-human, non-human biologics. Yep, we have those. What are they getting us ready for? A mass deception, a UFO invasion, UFOs beaming millions of people off the planet during the rapture. 
That's what I think is coming. So, yeah, you know, and here's the funny thing. NASA and the military, they've admitted that these aren't extraterrestrial. And, and they admit it when they talk about the, the speed that these things move at and the way they can go, you know, thousands of miles per hour and then just turn right. I mean, if there was a human in there, we would, we would be smooshed. Our, our bodies can't take that. And so they, they actually talk about how because of the technology and the speed and all that, that, and how quickly they just come and go and they just disappear as well, that we are not talking about extraterrestrials. The government is now um, admitting that they are interdimensional. Yeah, interdimensional. So Pew Research says 65% of Americans believe in intelligent life on other planets and 51% believe they are a threat to national security. So in the church, it's reported that between 40 and 61% believe in aliens. And that's in the church. And that's really scary. Um, one of the things that terrifies me is that you hear the numbers of people leaving the church. Well, why are people leaving the church in droves? Is it because they see this stuff with their own eyes? It's because our own government is telling us that it's real and we're not hearing anything about it from the pulpit. We're not getting answers from the word of God when there clearly are answers. Hmm. Yeah. So that, that really gets me. So then there's the Catholic church, right? Do you guys remember the, the, videos we did on the, the Catholic Church earlier and their connection to the the alien agenda. Yeah. Yeah. Well, remember the the resurrection of the Christ statue that was behind the Pope's throne? Uh, this one. Yeah. yeah, throw that baby up there. Take a look at that. Now that that statue is called the Resurrection of the Christ. It is sixty six feet wide, which is double the number of man or flesh or sin and 23 feet high, which is, you know, the biblical number for death. They know that. And it depicts a uh, disfigured Jesus rising up of the, out of a, uh, the crater of a nuclear bomb. If you go to the next one, it's a little closer up. The next photograph. Oh, nope, not that one. Oh, they're probably not in order. Uh, this one? Yeah, that one. So if you take a good look, you can see skulls, you can see uh, nervous systems, um, veins, guts. I mean, it's, it's just, it's absolutely disgusting. Um, the, we, the we've entrails. talked about this one before. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. But that was, that was a couple of months ago. We've got a lot of new people. <laughs> so so right. when you're, when you're talking about the alien deception, you got to talk about the Catholic church. You really do because they, uh, they have cornered the market. So if you take the statue and you cut it in half and then you put up a mirror image, what do you get? So there it is. You cut it in half. So then there's the next photograph of it without the line. Um, you know, it's funny know which one it is. them in order. <laughs> oh, this guy right here. That one, yeah. Oh, it's too tiny. It's too tiny. Got to, what is that? What is that? That is an alien gray coming out of a satanic goat head, a Baphomet head. Don't hmm. tell me the Catholic church does not know that that's there. They most certainly do. That is exactly what you get when you cut that thing in half. And then you, the snake face is kind of a funny thing there. If you take a look back at the, the actual meeting hall where that is at. So that's in between those two fangs on that snake face that, that that's, that's where the Pope has mass. How many times a week does he have mass? That's where that right in between those fangs in that red area is where that that demonic statue is. And you can see the fangs. You can see the the tongue 
of of the aisle there the the viper eyes the pit viper uh uh places where they they spit out their venom it's it looks like a reptile it does it does well and you know vatican the word vada means divining and the word can means serpent in in latin vatican hmm. is literally divining serpent yeah a lot of the um a lot of the ndes that i study the ones that go to the hot place they always comment on how the demons down there many of them have a reptilish appearance mm-hmm. yep hmm. Yep. So, so here's the, the Catholic church telling you exactly what's going on. <laughs> so, and then their 2020 nativity scene was, was, uh, lunar Jesus. It's absolutely crazy. There's, there's some photographs of that too. Which one's that? Uh, here. Nativity. Yeah. Nativity. That one. Yeah, that's a good one. So there's there's astronaut um, kings. Those are the the three kings, the astronauts there. Um, Jesus himself, but the baby Jesus is in some kind of a red bag. It kind of reminds me of um, Kal El in uh, Man of Steel with Henry Superman. Cavill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the movie Man of Steel, though, was was really, the movie Man of Steel was very interesting. If you were really watching it, you saw a lot of Jesus references. Hmm. So when he is trying to decide what he's going to do, um, when when Clark Kent is is deciding, do I take on this this evil force that's come to to get me and to destroy the earth with this this what was it, the earth builder or the earth engine or something like that? Um, where did he go? He went into a church. He went to a pastor and he sat there and the, the stained glass windows behind his, his head, as he talked to the pastor about what he should do were the, the, the death and resurrection scenes. That's what was behind his head. And then when he, when he was killed and then he rose again, because the sun hit him and he rose again, he came up and he had his arms out. He had his feet crossed and he had his arms out and he rose in the sign of a cross. Huh? Yeah. So go back and watch the movie man of steel. There are, and those are just two. There are several other references to Jesus in man of steel. And if you think about it, um, the, the half, you know, the guy from another planet, the the person from heaven coming to earth to be its savior. That's well, that's I've, Jesus yeah, I've, I've made that comment on the show before that it seems like just uh, at the very core of the uh, of storytelling that we're attractive to requires a hero in, uh, which is always the story. It's a single hero, which is always the story of of Jesus. Uh, and you see that through mythology and you see that in all of our TV and our, and our, um, you know, shows and, and just like, it's a, it's a standard staple for telling stories is you have to have a hero. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because, um, Solomon said that, that God has put eternity in our hearts. What an odd thing to say. God has put eternity in our hearts. What does that mean? How do you put a piece of eternity, a piece of of God himself in your hearts. It's, it's our homing beacon. There's something in us that some people call it that God shaped hole that only God can fill. Um, the Bible says it's there. And I think that that is why we yearn for those, those stories. And we yearn for that, that, um, hero because Jesus is the hero of the heavens. He is Mm -hmm. the hero of our story. Yeah. That's yeah, even written in the stars. And when you look at Psalm 19, it talks about the, uh, uh, the, uh, the groom coming out to run the race. Mm-hmm. Yep, very much. And he's, he's a strong man, mm-hmm. you know. So, so the Catholic Church has, has one more fun thing up their sleeve to show that they are, are absolutely ready for some kind of a deception is, you know, with the aliens. And that would be their Lucifer telescope. <laughs> We got some. We have that one on here. Yeah, I don't know why some of them. 
Yeah, I don't think you sent me the Lucifer one. But I remember what I was talking about the Lucifer telescope on the last time we talked about this. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, so they have the world's largest infrared radio telescope on the top of Mount Graham in uh, Arizona. And this is a, first off, it's tribal land. And so the tribes have been fighting them like nobody's business, but they did it anyway. They have the money to make that happen. And one of the reasons that the the tribe that's there, and I can't remember who it is. Is it the Comanches? Hmm. I can't remember what tribe is there. But uh, the reason that they're fighting them is because it's a known portal to hell. And they're like, uh-uh, hmm. don't you bring that stuff up. And there's the Catholic Church right there on the top of Mount Graham, which is a known portal to hell. The tribal folk there will tell you th that it is. And they have the world's largest, most expensive infrared radio telescope. What's interesting, so they... Go what's ahead. interesting about that facility is that they have secure comms between Vatican City and that location. Uh, very, very similar how JSOC uh, military um, platoons and organizations work. It's direct radio comms, um, secure um encrypted comms and it can operate even with the grid down <clears throat> but they have direct line uh, radio comms between because you know that's a great distance from the vatican to that location but they are mm -hmm. able to communicate regardless of the grid scenario it's a hmm. military style ham radio setup that gives them direct communications at all times yeah, they also have another observatory in Italy, very close to um, the Vatican, called Castle Gandolfo. <laughs> Gandalf. <laughs> there we go, all you Lord of the Rings folks like me. Woohoo! Castle Gandolfo. So, um, and both facilities have have uh, technology that our government would love to get a hold of. As a matter of fact, our government uses their infrared t uh, telescope because. Because they have nothing like it. Yeah, the Vatican hmm. has technology that is next level. It's um, you know, folks that we know that work inside the different agencies um, in the CIA. They have always said that the Vatican technology is always the most advanced on the planet. Mm -hmm. hmm. yeah. yeah. And, and you got to wonder how they get that. Well, we know how... We know how they got advanced technology back in the days of Noah. We know how they got advanced technology back at the Tower of Babel. They were trading women and children to demonic entities, to fallen angels, to make a hybrid race. And in exchange, they got forbidden knowledge, forbidden heaven. Well, that and that they also have the most money in the entire world so they can pay people to go steal technology as it's being developed and discovered well <laughs> they sure you know, can well and think about it they were absolutely the catholic church was totally connected to the nazis in mm. world war ii they were hand mm. in hand to the catholic church turned their back on the public when the nazis were committing genocide it was presented them to them as evidence and they chose to do nothing about it. They knew it was happening. And they wow. knew that the Nazis had had actually brought the, the throne of Satan from Pergamum to um, Berlin. And they were using it and ancient spell books and all kinds of diviners to, to get forbidden knowledge out of the dark side. It was, I, those people were, were doing some serious, crazy, interdimensional stuff. Hmm. And that, and it's very obvious that that's where they got all their technology from. Well, what happened to that technology after, after the demise of Hitler? It came to America in Operation Paperclip. Along, yep, along with the scientists. Yeah. Operation Paperclip was the wholesale movement of the Nazi science and, and technology um, infrastructure and group from Germany to America. 
That's mm -hmm. that's who has been running our military, our, our deep ops in our military. That's why we have the DARPA program, which is trying to make a super soldier, a transhuman super soldier. You know, we have the heart program that's all about controlling the weather, you know, and now we have, you know, and I don't know who's responsible for the dues and different things that we have as well. But but all of that stuff was being worked on back during Nazi Germany as well. So, yeah, it's it's just crazy stuff. So. So anyway, the Catholic Church is neck deep in all of this. And and when you read, you know, for me, when I read Revelation 13, the beast from the land, the beast from the earth, I totally, I totally see the the Pope. Let me let me grab it here real, real quick. Revelation. Oh, I'm not used to this. Boom, Revelation 13. Okay. So then I saw another beast coming up from the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, but he spoke like a dragon. Okay, a lamb. That's, we're talking about a religious figure. But he spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence. So when he's with the first beast, he, he exercises all of his, the same authority. And he causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast. Okay. So he's a worship leader. That's what he does. Uh, the, the first beast whose deadly head wound was healed. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of man. He deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast. Okay, what do what does the Catholic Church do better than almost anybody else? Make images and statues and push idols. I, push idolatry, yep. Yes, yes. You know, so... Um, well, and, and he, you've, you've got your dew here too, and he even makes fire come down from heaven. Boom. <laughs> That's your dew right there. Boom, yep. So think about this. John is an ancient man. He has not seen technology of any sort. He's a fisherman. So when he's seeing all of this, his explanations are very simplistic. You know? So yeah, what would he think if he saw a direct energy weapon? Mm-hmm. We you think know? it's fire coming down from heaven. Yeah, absolutely. So Revelation 16, 13, here's poor John again, trying to make, oh, let's, let's go through 14. Um, here's poor John again, trying to make sense of something that he sees it. He's like, whoa, hold on. Uh, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, out of the mouth of the false prophet. And these are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle on the great day of the Lord God Almighty. So John is telling us right here, because because he doesn't know what this is. He knows that it is a unclean spirit. He knows that. But he says, like frogs, hmm. like frogs. Well, he's never seen an alien gray before. He's never seen the statue behind the Pope you know, in the mirror image of it. So yeah, of course, if he saw what we know is little green men or galley and grace, he would say it was like a frog. Yeah, but they're coming it's, out of the mouth. You, so you, you think that, and I saw three unclean spirits them. coming out of the mouth of the dragon. There's a lot of visual, there's a lot of figurative imagery here. So you're, you, you think this is aliens because of the frogs? Yeah. And, and think about it. One thing that we, we know, I mean, all of these aliens need to be channeled, don't they? They need to possess us and speak through us. It makes absolute sense that these frogs would be coming out of their mouths. Well, so by aliens, you're, you're speaking spirits, right? The spirit, the evil spirits that are doomed to the earth, right? To crawl on their bellies. Yeah, I am. Well, I'm talking about the, the watchers, the fallen watchers. The yeah, the, the disembodied um, spirits from the Nephilim. Oh, okay. And those are their children. So there's two right. things going on here. So oh, there's yeah, fallen there's, watchers. 
fallen angels. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then there are their children who were right. half human, half angelic. And most right. of them were, were killed or died in the flood. So their bodies died, but mm -hmm. the angelic part of them still lives and it needs a body to inhabit. Right. There's it, the, the fallen angels, they're bound and, you know, in darkness, but like Kip said, the, the Nephilim that died during the flood period, they're essentially souls that have to, you know, right. find a, find a new vessel. But I am a firm believer mm -hmm. that there was some that survived and repopulated. And there's been uh, a lot of evidence and I support that theory. I, I feel like that all of these quote, quote, aliens that we see, these are Nephilim and they're hybrids and different, you know. But weren't the weren't were they able to identify the Nephilim by their like six? I mean, because weren't they just giants? I mean, is there anything in the scripture that that directly indicates that they're um, like well, frogs? He, he, no, I get it. Here's the thing: is that in several passages in the Bible, God had the Israelites wipe out complete towns, including animals. So sure. not only were they crossbreeding with humans, but they were crossbreeding with animals and reptiles. And as the years went on, some of these quote, quote, aliens that we see, they're hybrids, not just, you know, the initial Nephilim, those giants, but we have no real idea of how crazy their hibernation, you know, how different, so many different um, styles and species originated from their all their crazy different hybrids yeah yeah, yeah. and well, it's funny because the bible actually talks about the the hivites the, or the hivites and they yeah. buzzed like bees yes. what is hmm. that and then there was the the clans that were the lion-faced clans now there's nothing that says specifically frogs but I'm, he's saying it's like a frog. He isn't saying it is a frog. Well, what do we know is like a frog? These meat suits, because Satan, Satan can't make life. Yeah, well, That's think about it. He cannot do. He cannot make anything biologic. But he's got this little meat suit thing that he can, that they can inhabit and run around. I mean, it's they're really pretty wimpy. If you stop well, no, and think so about these great big heads and these scrawny little bodies, that's the best he can do. So I'm a firm believer on the the they just they were hybrids and intermingling with different species and the more they intertwined and you know yeah, populated I have they to, I have to disagree on this one because it seems too far fetched for me I I like to consider the theories of it but as far I've never seen it and here's the thing is it seems like speculation. So I, I know that there are people who have testified to like working in Area 52 and they've seen aliens and stuff like that. But we know people lie and we know people make no, stuff I, up. I, I haven't I seen You're... this stuff and it's so hard to like hang my hat on it. Like we don't see six finger people. Well, actually we do. That would be something that would be interesting to look at is people with genetic, dis, uh, you know, deformities and stuff like that to where could that be an uh, effect of the Nephilim? But as far as like the mixing with the animals, I have seen science where they haven't been able to, well, with the exception of the growing humans and pigs. So there are a couple of things. No, I but get as far it, as like a pig person, eh, I don't know. It, it seems thing. too, it seems too far fetched for me. I, I'm, I'm, I definitely believe the spirits are the disembodied Nephilim and that because I've seen those myself personally, but as far as, I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around the alien part of it. No, I get it. it that's just your personality. You're a data guy. Your mind's not going to allow that to happen. But the it's, I mean, it's clear in scripture. That God had commanded the Israelites to even kill the animals in these towns. And on yeah, the, we can agree on that. The, the hieroglyphics of a lot of the Egyptian tombs and a lot of their um, just tons and tons, they had animal uh, human-like oh, creatures head. on the walls. Uh, and I understand that that's something that you're not going to hang your head up on, but I'm hundred percent on it. I know. Yeah. That well, it's, it's hard to speak in absolutes like that because um, it, unless you've experienced it for yourself, you can't really say that it's a hundred percent. So I'm, I'm definitely I, I just, like, I think it's interesting, but until I actually see them for myself, I have to go with what I can actually experience myself and what I've actually seen. I get it. I've it's seen the genetic. Well, you've I've never seen, seen deformities. Jesus. 
You've never seen Jesus, well, but haven't. you believe. Well said. But, yeah, but well I do said, experience Kip. the fruit of the Spirit. I, I yeah. do experience the fruit of the Spirit. So retaining God in my heart and um, you know practicing what the Scripture says, I see the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. I get it, but the same, the same correlation applies to what we're referencing right now. It's the, the thing is this is, you know, when you know, you know. I understand that some personalities can't hang their hat on stuff when, unless they have concrete facts. So, it's just I've, I've yeah, done enough so digging you know, on this. How do you know that this isn't like false prophets using wonders to deceive people? Because this, there's, 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 I, I don't know. This, the, to me, this just seems like it's, I'm, it's I'm leading reading people. I'm right out of scripture. I'm that? reading right out of scripture. John so, saw three unclean spirits. He knew that they were demonic spirits, and they, right, which were I agree, I agree with the spirit part. And they're coming yeah, the spirit out of the part mouth I definitely of the dragon, agree on. And out of the beast, and out of the false prophet, for they are spirits of demons performing signs, which go out to the kings of the earth. And of the mm -hmm. whole world to gather them into battle for the great day. So these yeah. these unclean spirits that look like frogs are speaking through these three people, and they are making an army. They are bringing an army together. That's what Satan is doing, and that's what he's yeah. been doing through all these alien abductions for all these years is building an army. The seed war never ended. The seed war of of Genesis You're right. three continues on you know how do yeah you but I would, I would argue that that, that, that what biden is actually money. doing with the i would argue that what biden is doing is you know with the thing the lies that are coming out of his mouth you could argue are seeing unclean spirits as he's gathering the world to for the war mm -hmm. i don't relate oh, that to like literal little say, beings i, what? I, I get it huh? uh, i Not get it guys so, it's, the spirit in there him. there's different personalities that can accept certain things there's some personalities that has to have data and will not take the scripture literally for a lot of cases where there's other folks that operate uh, really through a lot of discernment and spirit and study the scripture and do take it serious uh, for me when it comes to the decisions that i make I, 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 that's the decisions i make based off my research so it's yeah fine. it Everybody's says unclean spirits opinion. though it doesn't say aliens doesn't i mean right. it's just a spirit I'm not like a frog aliens. I'm, I'm saying there is no such thing as an alien watch no, there's right? not there's no such we're, thing we're talking about not hybrid nephilim all. that hybrid I'm, nephilim I'm, that have uh procreated with different animals different yeah, but people. wouldn't it make more sense that the spirit is actually like in the bite like biden and who's who's spreading lies and oh, trying i'm sure to build there an is army well, I'm sure there is. When the Nephilim die, they don't. Their soul doesn't go to, go to hell. So they are left to wander the earth, which is your demons that are demonic possessions. I'm referencing right. the advanced technology that was provided to the Egyptians to try to exterminate the Jews. It was provided yeah. to the Nazis in the 40s to try to exterminate the Jews. They had advanced technology. All of this technology is 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 clearly relevant today in these aliens and quote quote things that we everybody says that they're seeing. This is the advanced Nephilim in many different shapes and forms because they've had thousands of years to procreate with many different things, including animals, just like it says in the Bible when God commanded the Israelites to wipe out and complete towns including the animals yeah you, 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 yeah, you keep saying that but i it, it sounds like we're arguing the same thing where i we agree that there are spirits that possess people but where we seem to disagree is is on like the beans like we're, we're in agreement that there's no such thing as aliens right, right. so no, but what we're all. saying is they're pushing it as a deception see that's what i'm saying it's yeah. unclear is a lot of this talk is it sounds like we're trying to push that there's actual aliens and i don't think there's actual aliens no, no and i no, think we need not. to be clear yeah, we need to be clear that we're not saying that there's actual aliens, that there's we have been demonic. Clear. Me and well, Kip that's have been not, trying yeah. to tell you for the last 30 minutes what we're talking about. Yeah, but I don't believe I don't believe that they're going to present as aliens. They may be able to use some holograms. I've never seen these holograms. I, the the ones that I have seen are obviously all holograms. I don't I don't know. I don't I just I, don't I get think it. that it's going to be a deception. I think that it's. Yeah, I think it's what we're been see what we've been seeing where you have the president who's trying to say he's all great and you know he's lying about the things that he's done and he's trying to marshal an army against those who are speaking up and saying why the hell is this stuff happening that's not true you know we can see that you're you're you know there's wars and there's you know 
famines and there's all kinds of crap that's going on. I just don't see this alien stuff uh, as being like a legitimate deception. I can see what you're talking about with the, uh, the Lucifer telescope. I definitely know that the Catholic church is evil as hell. Uh, but it's, it seems to me that like, I'm telling you there's the deception is coming and they're going to pitch these Nephilim hybrid creatures as UFOs. Hey, whether you want to sign up for it or not, I'm just telling you it's coming. Our space brothers, and they seeded us here because there is no God. There is no God. So our space brothers are back, and they're here to teach us how to be nice and play play nice in the sandbox <laughs> with one another. And and here's their leader that they that they uh, uh, work with and they help and and he's the guy. I mean, who knows the the antichrist might be well we know that at halfway through he's indwelled by satan um mm. yeah we we have no idea could he be could could the antichrist be some kind of a transhuman guy i don't know i don't yeah. know but all i know is we are being set up from everything i can tell for some kind of an alien deception and i would bet that it will coincide with the rapture. That's that's my bet. So how do you answer uh, Revelation will. where it says every eye will see him though, even those who pierced him? Every every tribe on the earth will mourn because of him. That's at the very end. That's when Jesus shows up. So that's Revelation one seven. Yeah. It's not in linear order. It's not it's not. It's not in linear yeah. order at all. No. So um yeah, because if that was the case, everybody would become a Christian at the very beginning of Revelation, and the rest of it would never happen. <laughs> right. Well, no, um, that's not what I'm saying. It's just when it it says that when he comes. So, assuming that the that there is a pre tribulation rapture, it says that he'll that will meet him in the clouds. And Revelation one seven says, "Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him." Even so, Amen. So it's just like I don't see them. You know, I don't see a deception coming when everybody sees that. Yeah, I, I get well, it, but it, see, you have I to understand that, that our when, when that happens, I think when they see him, I put that at the second coming when he shows up and on, you know, uh, Mount Zion and the mountain splits from north to south, or is it from east to west? And yeah, so that's when they see him. I don't buy. I I don't buy into the rapture. The second coming of Christ is the same thing as everybody is experiencing as what they call the rapture. Now, if it happens, praise God, I'll be happy. Mm -hmm. But all right. my studies and scripture points to the second coming being the same thing. So yeah. so let's assume. So let's assume that you're right, Christopher, and that uh, the one thousand two hundred and sixty days when the two witnesses receive their power and authority. How would that fit with the deception? So do you think that what we're seeing with the setup with the aliens and these narratives and the, you know, these speeches about, you know, the current administration is so great, you know, <laughs> these lies that are blatant outright lies. So great do you think that they're going to be, so if there isn't a, a pre-tribulation rapture, do you think that they're going to be, you know, using this technology in order to uh, fight against the two witnesses maybe? Well, I think the reason why they're, you know, the lies that are going on, it's just they're buying time. They want more time to hold power, which is why they're bringing in um, so many people that can vote for them. They're just trying to buy mm -hmm. time to push their agenda along further. Now, as far yeah. as whenever they're going to roll out whatever is going to happen, that will probably be a very destabilizing event or, you know, it's. They keep planting the seed on these quote, quote, UFOs, and they denied it for a long, long time. So, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm not arguing against that. They are definitely doing that with with the Congress, with the meetings where they have people testifying. Oh, yeah, we've got yeah. these ships and non biologics and stuff like that. That that's those are facts that yeah. we can all look at. They are definitely doing that. My question is, is to what end? So the assumption here is, is that there's going to be some kind of a deception. Because mm -hmm. we know that aliens don't exist. If what yes. they're seeing and what they're presenting, the closest thing that we could relate to them is that they're Nephilim, right? That they're that they're some something to do with the fallen angels. Well, so we can see this battle being set up to where um, 
And this is where I'm kind of confused. It's just like, so, you know, are we here during the time the two witnesses or are we removed? And then the two witnesses are here to, to, um, uh, what's, what, how does it say where the, the, the flame, the fire to burn the chaff, to burn the tares? Cause it says yeah. they torment the world. Right. Yeah. I don't know. So uh, my, yeah, my thoughts it would be on really it. great if revelation was actually in order. <laughs> It's right. not. <laughs> it's yeah, so my theory is on it is that whatever it is that the the alien thing is, they're going to use it as a deceptive tool to pretty much stamp out the hope of most who were maybe lukewarm or on the fence about God, and they're going to present these UFOs and aliens as their God. And they're going to push the whole God narrative out. They're going to push it toward a one world religion. And then they're going to enforce it. And I understand folks like us are not going to sign up for this. But 95% of the world has their head in the sand. Yeah. So there's going to be a lot of people that will. That's all. It doesn't, you know, I, I get it that people like us are not going to get it. And folks watching this show are not going to get it. But. Just I'm just trying to figure and... out where that fits, where where that deception fits, because it kind of makes sense if there is a pre-tribulation rapture, but right. it contradicts it, with the Revelation one it, seven. Yeah. What's that? It would even work in a mid-tribulation in a mid-trib section. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we know that there's a deception. The question is, because we know that those who don't believe um, are going to go through the trials that are coming on the whole world. So so obviously they're deceived. And, and But th that seems like it's the point of the two witnesses, though, is to get through to the ones who are still written in the Book of Life right. who aren't going to take the mark of the beasts. Well, the thing is this, is if they present this deception that appears to be divine and there is no rapture, it's their case saying, look, it was all BS to begin with. Look, he didn't go anywhere. He showed up. This is what's going on. It's FUBU. So mm. then they'll push it into the one world religion that they've already been putting together at the Vatican. And at that point, we'll have some, you know, the chaos is just on the fringe, whether it be an economic collapse or a civil war or a nuclear war from the idiots running the world. There's so many tangible possibilities right now of just collapse in one way or the other. And I hate to even say that because it's not very positive, but it's reality. Yeah. So when that happens, there's going to be something that's going to put it all back together. And that will be the little horn, the antichrist, the son of perdition, however you want to call it, that's going to save the day. Now, as far as the, the alien agenda, I think, it, like I said, they're going to present it as this divine creature and that, hey, look, you guys didn't get raptured. I told you you were wrong. And then the Pope is going to say something, you know, stupid along the lines of being the false prophet and saying that he signs up with the, the alien greenheads that come down and claim to be God. It's all orchestrated. I see it coming. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, and first Thessalonians four seventeen says, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall be always with the Lord. It doesn't say that everybody sees him there. It doesn't say. Well, that. I'm referring to Revelation one seven. He is coming in yeah. the clouds and every eye. Well, I know, but you put the two of those him. together. You put the two of those together, and they're not together. Now, but Watchful's right, though. There's no secret mm -hmm. secret coming of Christ. It, it, everybody will see him. Well, this one here, being caught up together in the clouds, very well could be. That one very well could be a secret coming. He's going to come in the thief like a thief in the night, right? That's a secret well, coming. I get that, but this is one of the cases where as much as I take the Bible literally, this is a perfect metaphor or analogy for folks that are not prepared, that don't have their heart right, that live thinking they have more time to get right with Christ. It's going to happen like a thief in the night. And Joel did a pretty good job explaining that last night, and that's my position on that, whether I'm right or wrong. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, there, Jesus, there are Jesus is the thief. That. He's, he's yeah. the thief in that, in that statement. Yeah. yeah. Now, 
we're going to, let's pop in here, as long as we're just talking about um, aliens being, you know, Nephilim and that kind of thing. Uh, let me find. We should argue more often. That was a good argument. It's, it's fun. Oh, no, it's so, great. Well, it's, you know, some folks in the chat are like, are they really arguing? Look, it's okay to disagree. You just oh, remain yeah. respectful and yeah. moderate respect. You don't have yeah. to. You're not going to agree all the time. Oh you, no! Yeah, and, and honestly, and I, we want more. We want more of this because you guys need to know that we don't agree on things. <laughs> the whole oh, point absolutely. of two witnesses is where two agree, a matter is established. So if exactly. we were to pretend like we agree, uh, that's not establishing a matter. This is how you. This is how iron sharpens iron. You know the that that metaphor about sh iron sharpening iron. If you've ever seen somebody sharpen a sword. Or, 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 you know, beating a sword, making a sword. It's like, it takes effort. It takes work. It takes heat uh, in order to make things sh sharp. So that's kind of what we want to illustrate here is uh, no, get right. to the bottom of these things, you know, point and out the, point out the things that, that don't make sense because ultimately we'll find like, you're right, this doesn't make sense, but this makes sense. And where does this fit? You know, that's how you actually get mm -hmm. to answers. And there's been many times that watchful has, made me rethink my position and ended up being right. And it goes both ways. We both go back and forth with stuff. And it's just a matter of being presented with uh, evidence or facts or scripture that supports the other's argument. We're not married to any of these concepts. The only thing we're married to is Christ sacrificed himself on the cross for all mankind. Everything yep. else... You know, it can change depending on evidence in scripture or how it's presented. So mm -hmm. that's why we, we debate and quote, quote, argue about this because iron sharpens iron. You know, if you just agree on everything, you're not going to learn to make any progress. Yeah. And we really want to yeah. know if it's pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation or post-tribulation because that's that important. Point, we do. <laughs> we want to know. But, uh, and also there's, there's a big difference between unity and agreement. Hmm. You know, um, my husband and I were in unity, but we weren't always in agreement. There were things we totally disagreed on, but we were in unity. Um, and we are in unity here um, in the love of Jesus and trying to figure this out and, and pointing people to the Lord and trying to put the, you know, prophecy together with headlines to see where we are in the timeline and maybe figure out how things are going to shake out. We are, we are in unity, but we don't agree on the, on all the stuff. And how many times have you been in a group of people, even your family, even your church family and one little disagreement and you can't even talk to them anymore. That's, yeah, that's not like us. that. That's not us. So this is kind of fun. Um, yeah. In Daniel, in Daniel, when we, mm -hmm. when he shows that big old, um, when, when the King Nebuchadnezzar has the, the statue the different dream. materials. Yep. Yeah. And this is, this is always kind of, it kind of goes by the, the wayside. Nobody thinks about this. Um, uh, the angel is giving Daniel the, or, or God has given Daniel the, um, the interpretation. And he says, and as the toes of the feet were partly of iron and partly of clay. So the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly fragile. Okay. So that's, mm -hmm. that's in the natural. Then he says, as you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seed of men. Who's yep. they? And why are they mingling with the seed of men? What, what, all of it, what, where did that come hmm. from? But uh, they will angels. not adhere to one another, just as iron does not mix with clay. And in the days of these kings, they, we're back to the they, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Hmm. So right there, it's just the oddest thing. He's talking about this mixture, iron and clay. And we know that humankind is, is always related to clay in the Bible. So this iron, yep. is it is these Nephilim, is this this other, and they mix, but they don't adhere there. It's not like we're walking around with our, our, you know, Nephilim boyfriend or something like that. We're not, we, they don't adhere. Um, you have a Nephilim and, boyfriend? 
Yeah, I wish. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> now we can lift some really heavy things, and that's really important. Um, this this, this yeah. verse reminds me of that movie They Live with uh, Rowdy Rod Piper where he wears the glasses and he sees, like, the, the people that are aliens. <laughs> but watchful, back on the, the one topic for a second because it reminded me of something. There's uh, at least a dozen scriptures that I have written down where it references – uh, God commanding um, his people to uh, not only wipe out the towns and the animals, but in, in many different ways mm -hmm. uh, address the the Nephilim intermingling with the animals. And granted, we you know don't physically see it right now, but the Egyptians for thousands of years documented these whatever dog like human creatures and. You know, I, I understand that the evidence right now is thin, but there is a... Well, and, and I'm not disagreeing with you that there's a mixture of seed. It seems like what you're saying now is that we're simply disagreeing on the um, on the, the appearance the of end. them. Yeah. Well, I, that's. I think that's even separate, honestly, the deception at the end. Uh, I'm, I'm saying more like along the lines of like from the descriptions in the Bible of the Nephilim is they were giants that look like people right. uh, with, you know, six, hand, six fingers and six toes. So they still look like people. Um, well, they so did if for there their is first that, generation. Yeah. Well, they, what do you mean by that? Well, for the if, first generation. If, well, and maybe not the first generation though, in the early part of Genesis and as it moved on through the other books in the Torah, there was some where they were enormous in size of the, you know, as mm -hmm. tall as oaks. And right. then mm -hmm. after you get further into the timeline, like towards David and Goliath, he's only 10 foot instead of 50 foot. So the bloodline clearly was thinning as they were probably mating with more human women instead of their original bloodline. That, that's just how I get it. And then, well, yeah, and you're, you're making my point as they still look like humans, though. That's my point. No, yeah. But there's there's one thing, though. There's, there's so many references to the frogs and reptiles, and almost every NDE that I've watched that had a hell episode, they talked about how the, they look like reptiles. Mm -hmm. um, mm. Yeah. Well, and, and, and then have you all ever the heard other. Of Laura Sanger. Who? Dr. Laura, Laura Sanger, mm -hmm. S-A-N-G-E-R, she, she has an absolute gift for being able to trace bloodlines. Hmm. And, hmm. and it's something that the Lord has had her do. I mean, it's like her mission in life. And it, she just absolutely loves it. I think it sounds awful. <laughs> I wouldn't want to spend my day doing this, but she loves it. And she's she has documented Nephilim bloodlines versus our bloodlines. There are our blood people walking around on the earth that are of other bloodlines than ours. Watch me look at that who, comment on the screen. Well, yeah, that there's people now with six fingers and six toes. See, that's the stuff I want to find out about. Yeah, yeah. and a lot of them like, are, are these. Weird? Well, because I've even speculated that we might even have some some Nephilim. Uh, DNA in us, and that might be why we're dead in trespasses and sins, is because we're not that perfect being that it was originally formed with Adam and Eve. No, yeah, you're I absolutely would hope right. That wouldn't be the the case because that would make us non-human. <laughs> but well, I would really hope not. But, well, but I, I've, I've actually reached out to her to ask her to be on the show because she she can even uh, uh, trace the Nephilim to the Federal Reserve. Huh beginnings the she's got a book called the roots of the federal reserve and yeah, she because that that's how they um they fund everything that they do uh, frank makes mm. a good point that goes along with the deception line i, I like what kip's saying i just I saw this comment so it took me here for a second men's hearts will fail them from what they will see so well, that's a good point um something clearly surprises folks and they literally stroke out looking at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Con continue what you were saying though, Kip, cause that's interesting. Oh, I was just talking about Dr. Lucy. I've, I've, 
uh, asked her to be on the show. I have not heard back from her yet, but um, she generally takes a little while to get back to folks because she's so busy. But um, but yeah, there's there's bloodlines out there that can be traced, and yeah, we can we can I show. I wonder them. if there's if the the aliens aren't a manifestation of like certain genetics that come together. Like, say you have a father and a mother that have more Nephilim blood in them, and that's the manifestation. <laughs> Maybe that's where the aliens come from. Well, I know that we're going to have L.A. Marzulli on here in the next couple of weeks, and there's yeah. some really good questions for him right there because oh, he's yeah. he studied oh, yeah. the alien uh, deception for a long time that these guys aren't actual aliens, and they are. Yeah. His show is actually called On the Trail of the Nephilim. He has mm-hmm. a Nephilim skull on his desk. He does, <laughs> wow. and it's not it's not human shaped. It's, it's not really human. And gross. And they they've data tested the DNA and everything. It is not human. It, mm-hmm. it just it's that's where you know the buck stops at that yeah. point. <laughs> yeah. So it would be really great to ask him about Revelation sixteen thirteen about the the frogs coming out the things like frogs the demonic spirits like mm. frogs coming out of the mouth of the because for me that speaks of this whole how they always have to use our vocal cords. We need yep. to have a list prepared for him. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. a good question Let's, for him. We don't want question. we don't want to be disarmed in that conversation because it's been it's taken a long time to get him on the show because he's so busy. Uh, um, everything that we wonder, he'll have answers for. He recently yeah. did a show. It was very recent with uh, Tim Cohen, and man, yeah. they they went down a rabbit hole on that one. Mm-hmm. It it was not the normal Antichrist rhetoric from Tim Cohen. It was his no. dinosaurs and Mars and aliens and uh, space travel and the Nephilim uh, colonized a different planet when the flood happened. And, and the thing about Tim Cohen is, is his stuff may se- sound fantastic, but he backs it all up with scripture. Yeah. And he did not let L.A. Marzulli talk at all. <laughs> he did not. But he the the photographs that he showed were super compelling. And he's like, none, none of this. This is all straight off of NASA's websites. Yeah. His, he's got a book. His websites. Yeah. He, he has a new book a- that's dropping with that stuff. Yeah. Hmm. Actually, it was he's got an old book and you can get it. <laughs> he hasn't been hiding this. It's been out for a long time. So he's, he's had that documented for, for a very, very long time. I wish he would return our emails. Yeah. He's not returning mine either. (laughs) He did the the first few times. He did the first few times and then he sent me a private one and says, look, Charles is the antichrist. Stop talking about anybody else. You're wrong. (laughs) It's Charles. I'm like, all right, whatever. Yeah. That's Um, that's Tim. There's there's no room for questioning or argument, because I would mm. I would ask, what about this? And then I would feel like I've been slapped. It's like, oh, yeah, but yeah. that's you're not being <laughs> humble by by that tactic. I understand that he's yeah. devoted thirty to forty years of studying this, and the mm-hmm. evidence is monumental. Oh, it but is. But that doesn't. But that doesn't give you a pass at being prideful. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But yeah, his yeah, that if, show with him and yeah, if you're, if you're, was amazing. If you're right, you don't have to be a bully. Yeah, the truth the truth speaks for itself. You don't have exactly. to hammer people over the head, and you don't have to manipulate by saying there's no you know period. It drives me nuts when people say this is the end. Period. This is what it means. Period. Even even Christopher when he says 100 percent, that drives me nuts because it's just like no scientist in his right mind would ever say something's 100 percent. You can say 99 percent, but 100 percent, you always have to leave room. <laughs> I, there's certain things I just know and I know and it, it just I, I can't explain it. And most of the time, I don't have a 100 percent feeling on something, but there are some things that I just know and I can't explain yeah. it. So drives me nuts. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll try to do 99.9.9%. There you go, 99.99, and you, and you make Watchful happy. <laughs> you know, uh, speaking of which, I shared a NDE on um, social media earlier today of uh, someone that had been deceived in their NDE. And oh. um, I shared it with you also in a private message. She was... Yeah, I saw it. 
she was convinced and I'm not discounting that she did have an NDE. I 100% believe that she did. And a lot of the stuff that she was saying made uh, lined up perfectly, but there were several things that didn't line up. Um, she was an atheist, and the thing that most folks fail to, to remember is Satan. He is the master counterfeiter. So his... Anything that happens in that spirit world that's going to be some form of deception, he's going to try to make it resemble as close to the real thing as possible. And because he knows that the true NDEs are happening in masses now, and God is using this as a tool to awaken folks. So he has to counteract that. So he's... Hmm. He's trying to deceive as many as he can. Matter of fact, the channel that I shared, uh, I forget the name of the channel, but every one of their NDEs are, are not real NDEs. They're all deceived. They it, None of them ever talk about God or Christ. They always talk about reincarnation and this happy place for everybody. I'm telling you, he's intercepting um, yeah. these folks that are that are dying. He's counteracting against God's work. And I just, mm -hmm. it, this is one of those things. I just felt it so strong in my spirit and I posted it on uh, social media. I said, beware, this is a textbook case of a deceived NDE. Just like that dude we had on the show a few months ago. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, Satan is quite the ripoff artist, isn't he? Um, yeah. is, you know, in the end times we've got, you know, right there in Revelation 16, 13, we have the dragon, the and the, the beast and the false prophet, right? Mm -hmm. So who is the dragon? The dragon is is Satan's ripoff of God the Father. And the Antichrist is the ripoff of the Son. And the false prophet is the ripoff of the Holy Spirit that breathes life into the image and all that. So the, that's his, his unholy trinity. The other thing he's really good at ripping off, or I shouldn't say really good at it, he's really bad at it, but We've got, you know, we we look at scripture and we don't really believe what we read. Um, he's really good at ripping off God's tech. God Absolutely. has amazing technology. And I've mentioned it several times. Guys, read Ezekiel 1. It is a trip. And what yep. you're seeing there is these four living biological creatures that they're the same type of creatures they might be the exact same creatures that um that go around his throne day and night in revelation 4 singing holy 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 is the lord god almighty who was and is and is to come there's the face of an ox the face of a lion the face of, of a man the face of an eagle and they have all these eyes and these wings they're crazy looking things but somehow in the book of ezekiel these four creatures come together like a transformer, they come together and they make God's throne and it moves all over the place. And in the way that it, it is described by Ezekiel is moving is exactly how we see what are called UFOs today move really fast, just whatever direction they stop, they go, they and and read the descriptions. There's the wheel within a wheel and the flickering lights and in the the turquoise light in the middle you know um so that yeah go ahead. Uh, sorry it, it came to me it's that, exactly that, like every ufo poster for every ufo movie you've ever seen yeah and um book of uh, enoch talks about that too um Charmin oaks is the youtube channel it, who's that it's um, the video I shared earlier, the channel itself does um, mostly all NDE stuff, but it's very new age. Oh. And and yeah. I, I'm telling you, I, it, Satan is using him uh, for the deceptive narrative because his channel comes across very loving and compassionate. Mm -hmm. But I Thank know the way. Uh, I know I can tell when these are not legit and, uh, and the ones that are very deceptive, they're so close to the legit one because Satan has gotten really good at counterfeiting these. And mm -hmm. uh, this is the, 
he wants to send people back to deceive because all of these uh, deceived NDEs, they don't talk about Jesus or God. They talk about you'll reincarnate, that everybody goes to a peaceful place together and that, you know, you can see and review, do your life review and see all the different lives you've led in the past. And, oh, I met my grandmother at the gates of paradise. And there's so many things that line up with the true NDEs, except there are some red flags. And the biggest red flag will be is they don't talk about Jesus and God our Father. If they dance around that topic... That should be the number one. I wonder if those are the spirits of Nephilim. Like if 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 those people are um I wonder if they're not not deceived if but if they don't have that Nephilim in them that is <laughs> wants nothing to do with Jesus. Well the thing yeah. is this is that if they have that Nephilim spirit, A, they're not going into they're not going into that near death experience. They're stuck on this earth and having to inhabit another vessel. Um, mm. You know what I mean? There's they're they're those roaming spirits that are soulless. But, but yeah, but actually, that just brought up a really good point. If there are nephilim today, if they were die, then their bodies would be disembodied. They would be disembodied, and they would be exactly evil spirits. Right. Yeah. Mm. Well, and you know, it's funny because. When we first moved to El Paso years and years ago, uh, one of our really good friends turned out to be the son of a medium. And he absolutely believed in reincarnation. And we were talking one day and he said, yeah, he says, I, I think I'm probably on my last pass, you know, as, as a human in this human life. He says, I, I think I've, you know, kind of reached that point where I'm, you know, a good enough guy to move on to, you know, to the whatever's next. And I said, well, what is next? And he thought about it for me. He goes, well, Nirvana. And I said, well, what's Nirvana? He goes, well, you cease to exist. And I said, well, how's that? (laughs) You know, Nirvana was paradise. So then he said, okay, so let me ask you is, is reincarnation, uh, does it go through the animal? I mean, how does this work? He goes, well, you know, it's, it starts with insects and then moves up to to different kind of, so he's describing this to me. He said, well, okay, well, how good of a a mouse do you have to be to come back as a cat? And, and what does goodness mean to a mouse anyway? Uh, How good of a dog do you need to be to become a horse? How good of a horse do you need to be? I mean, who keeps track of these things? How many good things do you have? So I start asking him these questions and and I I did it in a way that was just very, huh? Well, how many this? Well, how many good things do you have to do? It's a deceptive narrative. Yeah. Well, oh yeah, absolutely. You did a good thing with a bad. And by the time I was done, he goes, you know what? This is really stupid, isn't it? It really doesn't make any sense. He never thought about it. No one had ever looked him in the face and said, well, how good of a human? And then I think the kicker was, I said, well, who's keeping track of this? And he said, the cosmic universe. So the cosmic universe is is keeping track of the good and bad things that you do. I said, so like a planet? And he said, yeah. And I said, oh, oh, did you know that? Oh, he said the stars. That's what it was, the stars. I said, did you know that a star explodes every 23 seconds? What if the one that's watching you explodes? Oh. Wow. Well, the, th- the thing that is the red flag for me on the whole reincarnation narrative is that you essentially get a free pass. Your eternity is not at stake. Worst case scenario, you come back as a lesser creature and then you can try again like it's a Monopoly game. That's textbook Satan deception. Textbook yeah. Satan deception. You will be like God. Yeah. Text God doesn't know now. that by He's eating this that. fruit, you will be like him. Hey, <laughs> folks, there is only two options out there. You either worship the Lord, our Father, or you worship the God of this earth. There is not a yeah. third option. And most folks don't even realize that they're worshiping the God of this earth because they feel like there's so many options. But there's not. There's only two. That's right. 95% of them worship the God of this earth, regardless if they're Hindu or, you know, or uh, Islamic or 
whatever the long list of names, it's all the same. When you go down the path, the end of the road, you will burn. So It's the creator or the created. I am, you know, I hear a lot of, and sometimes they've yeah. seen in the chat of people saying, oh, Mother Earth, this, Mother Earth, the earth is created. It is not a, a God. It, it can't do anything for you. There is no Mother Earth. So it's email? created. Although in Second Esdras 4, it does use the earth in reference to, um, in correlation with a woman who's pregnant. But so it, it basically says, go to, go to a woman who's pregnant and see if she can hold the child longer than nine months. She can't. Likewise, the earth can't hold the dead longer than the time that's allotted. Do you think Second, that's saying that the earth is a god? No, <laughs> no. I'm just saying that it's in, it's used in reference to uh, birth. In other words, the 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 wherever the holding place of souls are, probably in the earth, uh, can only hold it for a period of time. The same way that a, a woman who's pregnant can only hold it for a period of time. Second Esdras four. Yeah, no, we've talked about that one before. I was just surprised yeah. that you would like it because when I was talking about Mother Earth and I was like, uh. Well, I was just thinking right? like where where in the scripture could they have gotten that from? And I was like, oh, yeah, well, I guess if, if the Earth is. New Age tells us is that, that we are worshiping the Earth, that Mother no, Earth. No, I don't think we should worship the Earth. I just think it's no, a holding place for the dead. But I'm telling you what other people think new the right. new age and and that's, there are people in the chat that bring up mother earth and I'm like no 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 hey tyler reynolds um uh, uh apparently had an nde and he says i have the comment on the screen it says i was under the deception but god rained down and picked me up out of the fire um hmm. so if it it doesn't sound like that you were being deceived in your NDE because you were actually in the hot place and then you possibly crawl, uh, cried out to Christ or God and he took you out of there. If that is your, if that's the case, that lines right up with all the other uh, verifiable NDEs. I'd like to. Um, yeah, people, it's so easy to get saved. All you have to do is. Uh, declare that Jesus is your Lord and that God raised him from the dead for, you know, with the mouth confession is made un unto salvation with a heart man believeth unto righteousness. Yeah. Do you know how many people I know who their whole salvation prayer was God? If you're real, I want whatever it is you have. That's, that was it. If you're real, will you, will you come save me? I mean, I, I don't even know. And yeah. by George, he shows up. We don't have to have very much faith at all. That's right. Faith he like the grain of a mustard seed. Yeah, he provides it. Doesn't take much. He's that good. And, you know, I my friend, Pastor Pastor Otis Gillespie, always says that that he will use, this is how good God is, he will use any shred of evidence to snatch you out of the jaws of death and hell. And so our friend here who had that NDE and was in hell, he, it, one little shred of evidence and he will reach down and pull you right out and say, uh-uh, this one's mine. He doesn't know it yet, but he's in my book. He's mine. Yeah. Amen. Um, oh, my turn to talk. I was answering the chat. Wow. <laughs> we went two and a half yeah. hours, so I think it's a oh, no. We should probably go. No, it's yeah. it's not a big deal. I've really enjoyed this. Um, yeah, I just know um, my little tiny people are waiting on me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cool. But everybody tracks wackos. <clears throat> so, what did we learn tonight? So, we still don't know when the rapture is going to be. We're hoping that it's a pre-tribulation rapture. If it is a pre-tribulation rapture, it seems like they're gearing up for some kind of a deception. And it's, it looks like it might be aliens. Well, what'd you do with Kip? I, I oh, there she is. Uh, uh, aliens, so which are not aliens. <laughs> aliens, are which are neph Nephilim, right. Which are basically possessed people and hybrids. Is that, is that about right? Did I sum that up? Yep. Well, I don't know about possessed people, but I, I can see that happening. No, I really believe in the possession. The demons yeah. go from vessel to vessel. They need a body. 
And when, yeah, when I mean, they get kicked out, they bring back seven more. Yeah, there's some people that are possessed with, I've heard numbers of up to 2,000 demons. Yeah, oh, yeah. a legion. Well, That's a house party. A legion. Ah. Because when, when you said that, you know, you kick one out and they come, you know, if you don't fill it with the Holy Spirit, they bring back seven more. Um, yeah. That, when Jesus said that, he was also talking about how he wiped the, he cleaned the house. He mm. kicked off. Yeah, and and in the end times they are going to come back seven times stronger. So Thanks. we we have quite a foe as far as the evil demonic spirits. We are going to have yeah. seven times what he dealt with there in the end times. Hmm. Well, <laughs> it was it was fun tonight, guys. Um, yeah. Saturday I'm filming a wedding, so uh, it'll be Sunday before I make it back on. So yeah, so tonight we're so we we start the Sabbath tomorrow evening, and then you won't see us again till Monday, Sunday. Sunday, my bad. Sunday. Yeah. So Friday, Friday's the Sabbath. We always try to avoid that as a broadcast date. Saturday nights are always a variable. Sometimes we do it. Sometimes we don't. Depends on our each one of our commitments with our family and employers and whatnot. I believe last Saturday we actually went live. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes we put it up in the air. Not sure, but I'm just putting it out there that uh, I won't be here on Saturday. But you know, you never know. Uh, watchful or someone else in the group may go live Saturday night. But we enjoyed being with everybody. Uh, we really like the comments and the community and all the feedback from everybody. It, it keeps us on our toes. But if you don't hear from us until next time, we'll see you Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Everybody yes. have a everyone have a wonderful evening, and we'll see you Sunday. Bye bye. Shalom. shalom.